in social media. We are sending data out to Periscope, Facebook, Twitch, YouTube. Hopefully you folks are seeing the stream coming up and I'm joined this morning by camera woman extraordinaire Emily good morning Emily good morning Patrick good morning everyone hopefully you are able to see the beautiful Monterey Bay habitats we are waking up this morning with our sharks and other fishes that live in this beautiful exhibit we are yeah and um, you may be familiar with this particular view here of the aquarium because this is part of the view that you see during the shark cam. Now, the shark cam is actually going to be directly above us. It's mounted on the ceiling right above us. We're at the corner window here between uh, a few different really cool parts of this, what was the largest exhibit that we had at the aquarium when we first opened our doors back in 1984. This exhibit here, 90 feet across, um, a third of a million gallons of seawater. And this exhibit showcases five different habitats that we find out in the Monterey Bay, uh, where these different animals kind of self-select inside this exhibit but in the wild you would be diving between many different of these environments you might be on the sandy sea floor which you can see over on the lower right we've got a leopard shark resting there you've got the shale reef over on the left which is a soft sediment uh rock that we have all along the monterey beach and by the way we have our tiger rockfish that just came out here i have not seen the tiger rockfish for a very long time it is behind a either a starry or a honeycomb rockfish there uh, but this tiger rockfish hides extremely well we'll see if we can zoom in on it before it goes back no, it we is, have another rockfish totally photobombing our, our, yes, our we, angle, our we, camera angle here. We do, but <laughs> we do have a tiger rockfish that was just under the rock over there. there uh, we will, we will uh, let you folks know. Um, we'll let you folks know more about that fish here in, in a little bit. But anyway, uh, back to the exhibit. We've got the shale reef. We've got the wharf pilings, which is going to be uh, in the background uh, from here. And then, Emily, you are going to help us all out because on the other side, to our right, is a view that very few of you folks have probably ever seen here on the live stream, and that is the deep reef. Emily, can you walk yeah. us through the deep reef that we have over so here? So this is actually one of my favorite parts of this exhibit. And you can see that it's gotten a lot darker as we have moved the camera over from the left side of the exhibit to this right side. Um, and that is on purpose over on the right side, or sorry, the left side of the exhibit. God, wake up again. Yeah, with the we are, wake, here this we are waking up live Ooh. with we, all of you folks here. We really here. are. <laughs> uh, over on the left side of the exhibit, where is much lighter. These are habitats that are much, you know, higher up in the water column where you still get that natural sunlight. The deep reef, though, yeah. over here that we are looking at right now, this is an area that would be much further deep in the ocean, hence the name deep reef. Mm -hmm. You don't get a lot of sunlight down there. So what you see growing on the rocks instead of algaes and kelps, these are going to be different kinds of animals, invertebrates growing all over the rocks down here in particular some of my favorites are those big beautiful white plumed sea anemones that yeah. we're seeing those things that look kind of like cauliflower yeah exactly a lot tops. of a lot of folks come over here and they they wonder what are those things are those plants are they flowers what are growing there on what's growing there on the rocks and those there are what's known as matridium farsimen anemones as you said emily some white plumos anemones and you're gonna see a lot of these out here in the monterey bay out where there's a little bit of slower water motion and also down deep where there's no longer as much competition between algae and other invertebrates that are used to being up a little bit further uh, higher up in the water column down there you're going to have less competition for space and you're going to have these beautiful plume that you find here on these rocks and so emily is framing there with those uh, plumos anemones so uh, we talked about the sandy sea floor the shale reef the wharf piling and here we've got the deep reef component here of the monterey bay habitats and the final component the fifth habitat is the one that's looking straight up and that is the water column that we have there so you're going to see a bunch of different fish swimming by oh we just had a uh, copper rockfish swimming by we've had a few of these uh, oh there's a widow rockfish going by we've got a striped bass there in the background so so many different habitats cracks and crevices for these animals to hide out in. and it looks like we've got another tiger rockfish that is making an appearance on the lower left oh my goodness this is the morning for the tiger rockfish i guess i just gave up on trying to find them 
uh, because they were so well hidden. Now, no, and now, of course, right oh, no, here it comes. Here it comes, it comes everybody. Okay, we're getting really excited <laughs> for that rock, that rock fish that's swimming away from us right now. That is a tiger <laughs> rockfish. Sebastes, I don't know the species name, but Sebastes, Sebastes. is the genus uh, for a rockfish. Well, that got me all perked up and ready here. Oh, uh, that's my little jolt morning. of caffeine. They're seeing a tiger rockfish there swimming around. Um, I'm a volunteer diver here at the aquarium, too, when I'm not... Uh, I'm not here on the microphone. I go diving in here every so often to clean the windows. I've yet to see the tiger rockfish being so active. That's very exciting for all of you folks out there on the stream. Two of them in one morning. Two, oh, my goodness. Now, good morning. Okay, so very quickly, we should go to the chat, to the stream, and say good morning to everybody who is tuning in. Let's see. Who do we have? we got French Gulch that is tuning in. We've got the middle of England. We've got northern Maine that is there as well. we got Cincinnati, Ohio. we got South Dakota, Santa Barbara. We've got Diego Garcia. Hello. Thanks for being there, kiddos. Uh, we got Arizona, Pennsylvania, Little Rock, Arkansas, Arkansas and you take Kentucky, Wisconsin, Madison, Wisconsin, tuning in, Calgary, tuning in, another Arizona. Shout out to Arizona, my home state right there. Good morning, everybody. Uh, we've got... Another Arizona, Tucson, Arizona. Tucson Lots there. of folks from Arizona. Hello from Europa. Right We've now. got some Ooh. folks out there in the solar system, wow. uh, or potentially Europe, or, <laughs> or, or Europa, Europe, the town. Yeah. But uh, hello, <laughs> Northern California, Manteca, Manteca Long, Long Beach. Beach. Uh, there you go, right there. There we go. Uh, Iowa City, Iowa. Portland, Oregon's tuning in with us. Scotland's tuning in. Connecticut, Austria. Wow. All over the world here. Let, oh, we got Malaysia, Malaysia across the Pacific. Good Wyoming to see Wyoming tuning in. Dayton, Nevada. Keep it going. Uh, Dubai is tuning in as well. Oh, we've got... Uh, some locals tuning in with us here, Monterey County tuning in. Yeah, good stuff. Johnston, Pennsylvania, San Jose. Oh my goodness, we have so many folks that are, wow, Texas is there, Montana, more Texas, Ventura, Turlock, California. Uh, that's where my family is at. Hello, everybody there. Oregon City, Sacramento, LA. I think once we started telling everyone <laughs> where they were from, we got even more <laughs> coming more in. Excited. Sacramento, Nebraska. Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna zoom uh, right back down to the bottom. We got Omaha, Florida, Indiana, Carson City, Nevada. Everybody is tuning in. We got Danny. Hey, Danny. Thanks for hey, being Danny. there. Fresno, Seattle. Goodness gracious. Well, we are here uh, very early morning here at the at the aquarium. Uh, well, just, you know, before I, well, I think it feels earlier. Because it feels earlier. Just, Thank you. Time you know, change. Yeah. yeah. May we have another daylight savings. Uh, daylight savings. Ooh. That would be fantastic. But um, so. We should mention, uh, Emily, that these Monterey Bay habitats, especially this view that you have right here, this shale that's in front of us is part of the reason the Monterey Bay National Marine Sanctuary was set up because um, shale is famously oil rich. And so the Monterey Bay National Marine Sanctuary was set up back in 1992 specifically so that there would not be oil drilling happening in the Monterey Bay, because you can see just from panning around in our exhibit, which is a very, you know, 90 feet is, is it's a big it's a big exhibit. But compared to the physical Monterey Bay, it's not very large. But you can see just how much life you can find here in a very small uh, area. If you were out diving off of Hopkins Reef, you would see uh, the deep reef that Emily showed. But then if you go about two miles down and you're diving over at Del Monte Beach, you're going to be seeing this shale reef that we have here in front of you. Obviously, the water column covering up all of that. There's such an incredible diversity of life in the Monterey Bay that back spill here is not only tragic for the sea otters and fishing industry, it's also tragic for all of these different habitats. So much diversity, so much life in the ocean that changes from surface to seafloor. So uh, what you're looking at right here is that ecosystem that is protected uh, by that marine sanctuary to prevent oil and gas exploration yeah, all there. all these habitats protected by that National Marine Sanctuary. And, you know, we're talking about the shale reef there. Totally different geology than other reefs like that deep reef we were looking at just a moment ago, that deep reef. Those boulders are going to be made out of granite, really, really tough rock that things are going to grow on. But this shale reef, this yeah. is a really soft rock. Things can burrow down into it and either live there themselves or when they die, they leave space for other animals to move in and create homes for themselves. So you have things living on the rock, but also in the rock, around the rock. This is a really incredibly diverse, rich habitat that so much life depends on there. So 
one of the reasons why you know we're showing off this Monterey Bay Habitats exhibit here is because this is exactly what you would see when if you were to go diving off of the back deck here at the aquarium these different beautiful habitats all right here in our Monterey Bay yeah uh, we're talking about five of them right now but so many different habitats so many out there. so many more as well yeah and so this uh this shale is where the boring clams go. So if you think back to uh, <laughs> think back to some content that we posted a little bit ago about boring clams being uh, not that boring and actually the life of the party, nobody rocks out like a boring clam. Uh, well, that is the shale. That's where those uh, clams are living. Now, um, some other animals that we can point out in here, you know, we talk a lot about the seven gill sharks going by and obviously those are really cool seven gill sharks. You find them in the San Francisco Bay, sometimes in the Monterey Bay, and they're actually a pretty shallow lived shark. We've also got this leopard shark that's going by in front of us there. On the shark cam, we talk a lot about the sharks, but right here in front of you folks, we've got quite the plethora of, oh, and we got a bat ray bat going ray by. Ray. Dun, 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 stream. <laughs> uh, there you go. We got that rage caffeine for you in the morning. Uh, but no, we talk a lot about, we got the also the spiny, spiny dog, dog fish, fish that's going by. All of the sharks, they, they heard us. They, they heard, heard us talking, talking about, about Well, no, they're not the stars of the show, Emily. What I'm I wanted sorry. to talk about, I wanted to talk about <laughs> the rockfish that we have here in front of you because folks there are so many different species of rockfish in our local waters it's really something that's very special to our area because rockfish there are over 75 species that we have here in our local area and if you go around the rest of the world there aren't that many species of yeah. rockfish there's just yeah. a handful so we are so fortunate here in the monterey bay to have so many different types of rockfish we've got the tiger rockfish on the lower right that is hiding from us before I can get to it. We Patrick. can't get you to it. it. We can't get to you it, but maybe we can. Maybe, maybe we, can. we can. All right. Maybe I apologize. Can. Fast camera action happening now. There's oh. zooming there. in. There's our tiger rockfish. Finally. Highlight of the <laughs> show. Look at it go. Okay. So that's one species. Then right above that is not a tiger rockfish that there my friends is a flag rockfish. Then we have a copper rockfish that's hanging out here between the matridium. So we've got already three different species of rockfish that are hanging out right there. Then on the lower left right there is a vermilion rockfish that's hanging out. If we pan over here following the tiger rockfish, then we've got up here in the water column, this yellow fish, that's a canary rockfish. Then let's see, straight up here, that there swimming by, that's an olive, olive rockfish. Rock fish. That's going by right there. And we had a few other, oh, we've got a Boccaccio, which is yes. this rockfish there, the gray one with the long protruding underbite chin. That's a Boccaccio. And then over here, swimming away from us in the middle, the sort of drab colored rockfish is a widow rockfish. So just pointing out that there are so many different types of rockfish that we've just looked at just from moving the camera around barely 180 degrees. And in the wild, it's going to be very similar. Uh, we also have uh, in, oh my goodness, there's the tiger rockfish swimming there in the background. Uh, behind <laughs> it is uh, honeycomb rockfish. We also have some starry rockfish in here. We've got nebula rockfish in here as well. Got a cow cod hiding behind me there. Cow cod is It'll come out. Oh, it's 180 degrees from us. <laughs> Cow cod, uh, which was collected, I believe, same one down off of San Diego. So uh, just to let you folks know, all of these rockfish, they were commonly known as Pacific Red Snapper for a long time. And 98% of those rockfish were gone from our local waters at the height of their commercial fishing because many of these rockfish live a very long time. Some of them live over 50 years, some of them 100 years. Many of the ones that you see here in front of you live around 50 years, takes a long time for them to reproduce. And so, uh, sorry, we've got a big skate photo bombing us right now. Worth it. Worth it. Hey, big skate. Thanks for uh, and that is a big boy skate, yeah, by is. the way. Uh, you can see it looks how it sort of has like three tails. Um, well, the tail in the middle is its actual tail, and then the other two tails are what are known as claspers, uh, which help the male reproduce. Anyway, let me just wrap up my thing on rockfish very quickly, Emily. I apologize. But um, Pacific Red Snapper, they were fished almost completely out from the Monterey Bay, and then fishermen, local governments, folks working together in this community of the Monterey Bay all got together, switched up their fishing practices, um, and just coalesced around wanting to recover 
these rockfish. And so for many species like the canary rockfish, like the, Verme the vermilion rockfish, those have been removed from endangered species list. Boccaccio are now being able to be fished in certain areas. Uh, so many of these fish that you see here in front of you were endangered not that long ago when the aquarium was open and now they have recovered. And that's thanks to all of you folks out there working with the Seafood Watch program for your consumer choices. That's thanks to the fishermen, to the local communities out there banding together, working together to make sure that we can have our fish and eat them too here in the Monterey Bay. That's my little short story there on the rockfish. I'm sorry, Emily, take it away. Who do we have right We've there? We've got a bass drop. <laughs> a bass drop. A bass drop. <laughs> so we got, um, that was a long buildup. That was a long buildup. Build long rockfish. Well, hard rock to the bass drop, basically. Hard See, rock there fish. There you go. So well, this is one of our giant sea bass. This is actually the smallest of our uh, giant sea bass here inside of this exhibit. Our Monterey Bay Habitats is home to three giant sea bass this is our smallest little male that's hanging out here in front of the window with us right now, now uh emily we should we should inform the folks that that is something new to the fish experience which is being able to tell the difference between male and female giant sea bass right because it for a is. long time nobody really knew how to do that yeah nobody knew how to do that um oftentimes when you come to the aquarium you'll see the big beautiful sea basses with these kind of chocolate chip little polka dot spots all over their bodies the one that we just saw swim by the window though you might have noticed didn't really have those spots on it that's going to change over the course of the year mm -hmm. depending on the breeding season we didn't know this about those fish um, at the time and so we actually uh, found out just what like two three years ago mm -hmm. we had a scientist from Southern California who studies giant sea bass out there in the wild came up here and was just like oh yeah that one's a guy that one's <laughs> a mm -hmm. gal uh, started identifying which of our sea bass were males versus females because of those spot patterns uh, the males tend to kind of fade out during the breeding season while the females keep those spots during the breeding season there so we were able to tell that the largest sea bass here inside of our exhibit is a female we got another yeah. little gal over there in the kelp forest is another sea bass in the kelp forest right now that isn't uh, mature yet so mm -hmm. we don't know if it's a male or a female still has those spots on it all the time uh, but we do know that the two smaller uh, giant sea bass here inside of the Monterey Bay Habitats exhibit are males larger one is the female so yeah. it was really exciting to find out uh, our fish uh, if they're they're Males are females. Yeah, it's very there. cool. And um, Emily, you reminded me that um, if you folks head over to our Twitter, um, we had a post about uh, our colleagues down off of uh, Long Beach and I, be, I believe the Cabrillo Aquarium. Uh, many, many uh, folks down there in Southern California just released the largest uh, cohort of young baby giant sea bass that was grown up behind the scenes over, I believe at the Cabrillo Aquarium, they had several hundred of these baby giant sea bass that were released to the wild, which is really amazing because they are a critically endangered species uh, that has been slowly recovering thanks to not only marine protected areas, but also people kind of having a change of heart around these animals. But really amazing work being done uh, by our very own um, aquarist Kevin Lewand here uh, and all of his colleagues down off of Southern California, Long Beach Aquarium, Cabrillo Aquarium, all of you folks out there doing amazing work for giant sea bass that are slowly recovering along the coast. So um, when you folks visit the aquarium, when you support us, uh, you are not only supporting um, the the animals here, but also the animals out there in the wild with that research. And giant sea bass, one of those California conservation success stories, nearly extinct, now recovering. Still a lot of work to go, but a lot of work being done. And that's thanks yeah. to all you folks out there. Yeah, we're talking about, you know, these fish right now, the ones that we have in the kelp forest habitat uh, that you know, aren't even mature yet. These are very, very slow growing, long lived animal. And so historically they've been completely overfished uh, out there, especially in Southern California. Uh, and so to see people kind of coming together, understanding their biology better, studying them up close, learning a little bit more about them, learning that, hey, these fish need that time to mature, mm -hmm. to be able to reproduce, 
to replenish a population. Let's protect these animals so they can bounce back. It just goes to show the power of the community when you have the scientists working together with the fishermen, working together with the state, and just all to protect these awesome animals. Exactly right. Yeah, well, I mean, just as the community, the biological communities that we have out there in the wild, they need everyone to work together to be able to function well. Same thing with us people. If we all are working together, uh, then things are going to function even better, especially when we are looking to protect our living resources, not only for the enjoyment, being able to see them uh, out there in the wild, but also for the ecosystem services that they uh, serve, and then also for uh, the economic interest of those, those fish. All three things can work together, and the Monterey Bay is a really good example of that. Let's go to the chat. We want to say hi to everybody. Yes. We've got folks for tuning in from Jakarta. We've got folks in Maryland, Texas, Florence, California, New Delhi, India is tuning in. Thank you for being there. Lake Tahoe, Nevada, North Shore. Say hello and then go shred some pow uh, for all of us down here along the coast. <laughs> what is snow, Emily? I forget. I know. I'm, you're talking to an Arizona girl. Oh, that's right. Yeah. That's right. Uh, more folks tuning in from Maryland. Montana is there, I believe. Yes, thank you for being there. Oh, Helena, Montana, and a home of a future marine biologist who's currently studying at Montana State. Can't wait to work Ooh. at the aquarium. Yeah. We can't wait. We can't wait to work for you. Thanks so much for watching. South yeah, Carolina is there. Fishes with your studies. Exactly. Good morning from South LA. Thank you for being there. Good stuff. Uh, wonderful. Well, folks, we have just about five minutes here left before uh, the rest of the aquarium is open and we are going to want to uh, clear out before that happens so that we're not in anyone's way coming here to enjoy the aquarium. Let us know if you have any questions here in the next few minutes. Oh, thanks for watching from the Bay Area. We're waving at you. Hello. Reno, Nevada is there as well. Sacramento, Buckeye, uh, Arizona. We got, oh, Arizona, Buckeye. I think that's the team, right? Sorry. Buckeye is a city in Arizona. Is a, it's a city. Okay, yeah. fantastic. It's a there lot of go. different things. I know. <laughs> uh, let's see. Jeff, uh, Jimerson Road, Tahoe, Nevada. Thank you for being there. Oh, my goodness. Williamsville. Oh, there are Pisces. Thanks for okay. tuning in. This is your stream. Yeah. Ohio. Fit right in. Hello. North Dakota, New Jersey. Great stuff. Well, folks, wherever you find yourself around the world, thank you so much for tuning in. Thanks for spending some time here with some of these fishes of uh, our local community. Again, the Monterey Bay Habitats exhibit here showcases five different habitats that you have out in the Monterey Bay visible from the aquarium's back deck. Here we're looking at the shale reef and a bat ray going by up in the water column. We've got the sandy sea floor. There's the wharf in the background. We also have the deep reef on our right. All of these animals that you see here are living. Oh, there's the music the from music. the exhibit That's hall. That's our cue. That's our cue. All of these animals live just a stone's throw from shore. They are intimately connected to the history of this area. And thanks to all of you folks, they now live in a protected Monterey Bay National Marine Sanctuary with many different marine protected areas. And many of these fish have also recovered to levels where they're able to be fished sustainably again. So we can have our fish and eat them too, as we always say, with all of you folks out there helping to protect the environment. That also helps out the people that depend on these animals for their survival and their enjoyment. And thank you so much for tuning in and for watching from wherever you were. Emily, yeah. what do you think? Yeah, thank you so much, everybody. Uh, it was great to wake up this morning with all of you. I hope that uh, it was a fun, you know, little chat here, dive into our, our habitats with us. Yeah, all right, everyone. Thank you so much for watching. We hope you have a fantastic rest of your day wherever you are around the world. And we will see you again soon at the Monterey Bay Aquarium. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>